Professor Raymond Tanter, Professor Emeritus at the University of Michigan, now at Georgetown University, and uh, his latest of many books is called Arab Rebels and Iranian Dissidents. You can get that via Amazon.com and Kindle and paperback, too, and he's on the other end of our AT&T line. Thanks for being available. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, Michael Patrick. Can you give us a primer on exactly what this all means today and, and why we should be either glad or fearful? Well, it, it's clear that something will be announced today, and the issue is how Congress will accept or not this kind of a deal. As Senator Cotton and Senator Bush, Senator Bush, <laughs> Governor Bush have already contended this is um, a deal that is going to be something of a blunder. And my view is that Congress will have some 60 days to review the agreement, and it's going to be a tough sell to, to the Congress because what happens to the U.S. position of anytime, anywhere inspections, including the access to military sites, the International Atomic Energy Agency is concerned over possible military dimensions of Iran's nuclear program, and the Iranian-Russian demand that all U.N. embargo sanctions against Tehran be lifted. So my view is that this is a, um, a blunder, but it's going to be a blunder of historic proportions, and it's going to be hard to walk the cat back, Michael Patrick. Wow. Uh, what does each side get out of the deal? Well, Iran will claim, Rouhani is going to speak in just a few minutes, mm. probably in reaction to this program. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe President not. Rouhani of Iran will say that he gets immediate sanctions relief, and the amendment will be just on the details of how this temporary hold on the sanctions will be removed. And uh, the State Department will spin it quite differently. They will say that uh, there is no immediate sanctions relief, but there's already been, as this Weekly Standard points out, a, a Iranian-Russian deal that went around the sanction, sanctions, Michael Patrick. And what does the United States and uh, the rest of the peace-loving world get out of the deal? Well, I think what the United States gets is not the same as what President Obama gets. President Obama gets the same kind of momentum going for a nuclear deal with Iran that he has going with Cuba. And once you reach out to Cuba and you don't have a tough uh, negotiating position to go in with, it's hard to move it back because um, the Pope has endorsed the Cuban negotiations. The Pope has also endorsed the uh, Iran negotiations. So I think that President Obama will get his legacy-making uh, statement and uh, Congress will have a choice whether to disapprove or approve. Well, I'm glad you brought up Cuba because uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was on Fox News this weekend, and you saw that uh, he thinks the Senate unlikely to confirm any ambassador to Havana, to Cuba. And by the way, Congress may not be very interested in lifting the sanctions either, and that the president's way out front of them on that. Yes, but you see, the, there are about 400 American diplomats operating out of the American embassy in Cuba now. And it really doesn't matter whether any ambassador is confirmed or not. Um, it's just very difficult. And President Obama can probably appoint a temporary ambassador during this time. So that's a, that's a very weak hand for um, the Senate to, to play on Cuba. What, I think, a, what yeah, about in ahead. terms of the sanctions, though? I mean, can the president do that by executive order? Does Congress need to approve Will we have a trade embargo uh, continue or no? No, I think the trade embargo will continue in the eyes of Congress, and the Congress will have to go to the court probably in order to get the president uh, turned around. But the president can go to the United Nations and get a resolution of approval, which makes it difficult to contest in American, because it applies to American domestic law as well. Let's circle back to Iran, if we can, your uh, special area of expertise. Um, what, is the, what do you think their ultimate game plan is? Uh, the game plan of State Department on Iran or, or Iran uh, game plan? Uh, Iran's game plan, in other oh, Iran words. Iran it wants to get sanctions relief immediately so that it can get um, um, enough funds to fuel its work in 
uh, suppressing the Iranian people, and it fits in with my idea about Arab rebels and Iranian dissidents because it, it, Iran is the most important um, factor in helping the Iranian regime uh, operate in Yemen, operate against Egypt in the Sinai, operate in, um, against Israel in, the, in terms of Hamas um, in Gaza, and operate against um, the, the Syrian people as well. So I, I, I'm convinced that, that um, uh, the American people will suffer and the region will suffer, and the Saudis will say we want exactly what Iran gets as well in terms of proliferation. So if the president were to meet you over at the Georgetown Club for a glass of wine or maybe some chowder at Clyde's and say, uh, Ray, what should I be thinking? What would you say? I, I'd say, Mr. President, you better think about not only your legacy, but you have to think about the national interests of the country. And you need to, and he will then say, well, let's end this conversation right now because I am the country. <laughs> <laughs> I am the chosen one. And you might be from Chicago. But, and I'm from Chicago, but they picked me and didn't pick you, and there, there you have it. The story's over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know Jim Harbaugh at all? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What He's do you a fine make, fellow. What do you make of him? Well, I think that he will um, have a hard time overcoming his own legacy of being a winner uh, at Stanford, a winner at San Francisco, um, and uh, he will be expected to deliver the goods immediately. And I don't see how he can, uh, because the competition is immense within um, the Big Ten. And, you know, Wisconsin is strong. Ohio State is strong. All of these perennials are, are back, and Michigan has to rebuild this program. And, you know, don't count Michigan State out. Um, well, I tried to steer my son over to Georgetown, but he ended up in Ann Arbor, checked into the dorm two weeks ago. So uh, I'll be... <laughs> Spending lots of time in Ann Arbor instead of Washington, D.C. Well, like I'm still a professor emeritus at, at Michigan, so, okay. you know, I have loyalties all over the place. Stanford, okay. Michigan. <laughs> hey, that, that's not bad, and not to mention having taught uh, in Jerusalem, of course. But get his book at uh, Amazon or Kindle, Arab Rebels and Iranian Dissidents. And when you look up the name Raymond Tantor, you're going to be surprised at how many works he has completed when it comes to the area of foreign policy.